Colin, we are live. Woohoo! <laughs> Hello. How are you? Nice to see hey. you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Yeah, glad yeah. I could be here. I've been I've been hearing your voice、uh, for a while, and your super host on Clubhouse, and good, a great teacher for for a lot of people. And、uh, yeah, so so great to see you. Now, you are a YouTuber. And you are not just a YouTube YouTuber like many of us.、Um, you go from you've been like doing it for less than three years.、Um, you accomplished from what five hundred dollars a month, and eventually you're making gosh four k a month. So so tell us a little bit of your journey. Like first of all, how do you know how to make videos? Yeah, so I I I grew up with a love for cameras. So、um, I, I remember back in the day, like I was like, what was I like, eleven or something, ten, eleven, and I was like begging my mom for a camera. And there was like one at a grocery store for sale. She's like, you don't want that camera. Like it's gonna be cheap. I'm like, I want the camera.、Um, so I、uh, ended up getting that. And then we also just, you know. Throughout then, I had like an interest in photography and stuff like that. So、uh, I never ended up going to like film school or anything like that.、Um, but like as soon as I turned like I think I was just about to turn eighteen,、um, my mom let me get onto YouTube and be able to like open up a channel. So、um, yeah, I've always had an interest in cameras. And then you know it was about twenty fourteen when I turned eight,、uh, right, right, right when I was turning eighteen, I was able to get a channel and you know start. Putting content, you know, out online. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So、uh, let's rewind a little bit.、Um, I always like to find out people's background and where were you born and what is your、uh, growing up、uh, environment like? Are, are they very artsy or、uh, in the you know media、um, direction? Yeah. So I'm I'm from、uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So the whole Milwaukee area. Uh, I basically was, you know, born, raised in that, you know, general area.、Um, I come from a family of nine, so、Whoa! really big, <laughs> really big family. I have、uh, it, it was、uh, it six boys and three girls, so I had a lot、wow. of siblings to play with. That's why、um, you know how to negotiate, <laughs> right? Yeah, so you know that's where that's where you can learn those skills, learn、yeah. patience. Patience in the face of you know constant loudness and things going on.、Um, so、uh, grew up with that. I'm the third oldest,、um, so I had a lot of lot of younger siblings,、um, and so、uh, we grew up in a homeschooled family.、Um, you know, and yeah, I, I think、uh, you know had a few different interests like music. You know, I did piano for 15 years, so I am on the music side as well. Um, and maybe that same like love of like art of music kind of carried over with like photography and video. So I guess I've I've kind of been in the arts for a while.、Uh, there was like a little brief period of time in there where I wanted to become an animator、um, and just like get animation software and start exploring that. But that that dream never ended up happening. But、um, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a background of me and my my growing up years there. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know,、um, playing music.、Um, you you play fifteen years on piano. I think music is kind of related to media, to especially、uh, storytelling, because you have this sense of rhythm. Because I feel I myself, I'm a musician. When I editing my work, I kind of know when to start, when to stop. Where is the phrase, and. You know, so I think music is, especially classical music. Oh, pop music has phrasing too. So there, there is a rule, you know, of of rhythm, right? So it's it's helpful to tell stories. Yeah. So yeah, what do you say? Yeah, absolutely. Like,、um, uh, I've actually done some, like, you know, self composing myself of different, you know, songs and stuff. And、um, yeah, piano is definitely that, like.、Uh, Um, gateway instrument to get me into loving music even more.、Um, I do love classical music.、Um, I need to get out to like a like a symphony soon here. It's been a few years since I've been there.、Um, but Milwaukee you know, has is... a good symphony.、Colin. Who does Milwaukee? Milwaukee has a good symphony. 
I have. I've been once. Yeah. Um, oh, so shame gotta, on you. <laughs> shame on you. I need you. to go again. I need to go again. It was. Uh, <laughs> um, it's great. Yeah. 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 No, you have a, you have a like a second tier. You know, uh, I would say first tier, maybe ten. But Milwaukee is is a considered also very good orchestra. Yeah. Like a similar to like a symphonic chamber or Dallas Symphony or Houston Symphony, yeah. In that, that. I used to play with the P Phoenix Symphony. I'm a I'm a violist. Ooh, cool. I play the viola. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit now. Uh, so you're homeschooling. What happened? Uh, middle school, high school, still homeschooling? Yeah, still homeschooling. So oh my God. Uh, that. Uh... You know, that uh, dance at the end of high school is kind of awkward. You know, I had to dance with my siblings or my... <laughs> 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 no, you know, it, you know, it was interesting. You know, a lot of people like, you know, will ask me like, what's the difference? You know, do you wish you were public school? Do you not? You know, but, you know, I, I'm here where I am today. So I don't feel like it ever like negatively... You uh, turned out no. to be okay. <laughs> I turned out okay. So, you know, I guess it was fine. So. <laughs> wow, that's wonderful. So now uh, let's jump a little bit uh, forward is uh, in your uh, website, people check out um, uh, Colin's website, which is uh, down there, um, www.colinmichael.com. And you wrote very personally, you are a great uh, storyteller. You said uh, in April of 2020, I had a 2000 sub subscribers on YouTube. Now, 2,000 is not shabby. How'd you get there? Yeah, so it was interesting. So, um, you know, I've, I've been on YouTube technically since 2014. That's when I was turning 18. But it was never, like, super serious. Like, you know, I'd post content, but, you know, it was nothing, like, you know, insane. And I've had a few channels between then where I was like, I'll try this, post content, didn't work. Okay, new channel, I'll try this for a bit. No, it didn't work. Um, and so this was another one of those endeavors. So, you know, I started the channel like January, 2018, uploaded some content uh, over nine months and only got like, I believe it was only like 14 subscribers, um, 14 or like 104. I'm not sure. I, I didn't get a lot. Most of your siblings. <laughs> yeah, probably most of my siblings. You know, I just had them create five accounts and poof, you know, I'm um, so, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a lot. So I gave up. And then I tried again and, you know, put out some things and then I stopped. And that was like August of 2019. Um, and then what I noticed, you know, after I stopped, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to try and make money elsewhere. Maybe photography I'll get into or something, you know, wedding photography. Um, but over the next months, after I quit that second time, mm -hmm. I kept getting on my channel a consistent hundred subscribers every single month. Wow. I was like, that's odd. That's weird. So when I quit... I had, I think, like just under a thousand. I had like 800, 900 ish. But then over the course of like nine months, I kept getting like, you know, 100, a little over 100 uh, subscribers. And then like nine months later, I had 2,000 subscribers. I had my 4,000 hours of watch time so I could monetize the channel. Mm -hmm. I wasn't posting. Mm -hmm. I was like, what on earth? What's going on? So, so what, is, my channel. what is the, what is your niche? Like, why? Oh, yeah. How? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the niche I started um, uh, was teaching this. This channel was teaching uh, how to make videos on your smartphone. Um, so it that's was like, my territory. <laughs> I know I was in your territory. <laughs> um, so I, I was, you know, uploading like tutorials. I was showing some like tricks I had learned from other people, but just doing it with your phone uh, and being able to figure that out. Um, so a few of those tutorials, like one of them was like how to add music to YouTube from your phone. I think another one was like a splice editing tutorial. And it was like those few videos on there that just kept bringing in, you know, 100 subscribers every single month. And, you know, I wasn't posting. And so I was like, you know what? You know, when it was April of 2020 and I was like, you know, you know, in the middle of I don't know if I can say the word on YouTube, but in the middle of that thing that was going on in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Um and it was like, yeah, I was working a retail job, um, living paycheck to paycheck. Like we had a $50 food budget per oh week God. between me and my wife. Like oh we were God. canned food, hamburger helper. Um, I couldn't afford insurance. Um, 
Yeah, that, that's where I was at. I was like, I need to make more money. I need to make an income. So I was like, you know, if I could just make videos online and get paid for it, this would be the best part-time job in the world. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I could just make like $500 a month, um, like that'd be absolutely amazing. And part mm -hmm. of it too was I found out my wife was going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I've got this huge responsibility. There's diapers. There's <laughs> going to be like hospital bills potentially. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Got to make money. Yeah. Um, and that's what, you know, inspired me to like take action and like, all right, I'm going to take YouTube seriously. I'm going to study it. I'm going to try my best mm -hmm. uh, to learn it and try to make at least, you know, $500. So um, you already know the video thing, right? When you wanted to do YouTube. So that is a plus because a lot of people don't know how to do video. They're intimidated by, you know, and also I think there's a skill, not everybody. I mentioned that uh, the other day in another room. Uh, a lot of people say they want to make money on YouTube. I don't think a, a, not everybody is born to do a public talking right shamelessly like myself <laughs> and so so tell us how you study like do you watch tons of youtube channel similar to your niche and how how do you do it tell people yeah how do i how, how did i study like on the video like aspect of learning like how to make videos and stuff like that Mm -hmm. No, how do you, you like, this is a whole package. Not only you need to do video, you have to talk to your audience. You have to be very charismatic, right? You have to be a teacher, but you have to be a learner and listener. So it's like a, it's like a professor, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of different skills you have to learn. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of different ways to learn it too. But I think the best way to learn is action. Um, and just doing it. Um, if you go back to my videos where I was teaching people how to make videos on their smartphone, like my early day stuff, I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> like my videos were really poor, but I was still teaching people what I knew. Um, and yeah, that's what it was. And I, it was more of like documenting what I had learned along the way. Like I learned how to make a thumbnail on my phone, even though the thumbnails weren't that great. I still knew how to make one. Mm -hmm. And so I was you know, still showing people. And I think it was over time by practicing, putting into action things like I wasn't always the greatest on camera. I still don't think I'm the greatest on camera. But it by doing that, I learned, you know, I could put out something on the Internet and look at it and be like, OK, where can I improve? Um Maybe I talked too long in the beginning and didn't get into the content quick enough. Maybe I need to cut that out next time and, you know, really add value faster. Or, man, I really talked for six minutes on that one point. Why did I ramble for so long? Like, next time I'm going to, you know, try to stay concise. Maybe I'll write a script next time. Uh -huh. And so by, I think, taking action, I think that's the, the, the best instructor that's going to, you know, teach you. Learn through failure, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. I like I watch some of your videos. I like the beginning. You have this countdown, you know, 50, you know, and the, the, the second. Yeah. Is that a easy uh, to is it an app to do that? And then you insert? I mean, how the heck you do that? Yeah, it's it's built into the, the software I use, uh, which is Melon. So they just have like a, an intro and outro button. I can select a bunch of different countdowns. So I just click on one of those. And whenever I click go live, it immediately goes to the countdown. Um, and then the stream will start right after that. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, in terms of uh, public speaking, I mean, you did not go to uh, public school. And do you think it's something in you that you are a communicator? You are a... Uh, you know, um, or oh, maybe it's a retail store helps. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit, like, is that just because of your personality, you're very good at talking to people? So, <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, I, it could be, so my mom always told me, you are just so great at teaching people. You need to be a teacher one day, um, she would say, because I would like, you know, like explain game rules to like my siblings or, you know, being able to like instruct them in certain ways. Like my mom would see that. Um, but
but yeah, it could have also been retailed, you know, I'm talking to a lot of people and uh, sometimes, you know, no offense to anyone, but sometimes you work in retail stores, you get some really, you know, obvious questions that people should know. And so you got to you know, be able to simplify and explain it for, for everyone there. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll know where exactly it comes from. Uh, but I do think part of it was just putting out content. Like I was putting out content since 2014. So, and even those videos were really, really bad. <laughs> so go I, watch I, the I, bad videos. <laughs> don't go watch the bad videos. I have some of them uploaded. Some of the old ones, just so people can see where I was yeah. at back yeah, in yeah, 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, Oh wow. Okay. That's where he started, you know? Yeah. And I think if you do that for anyone's channel, you know, if you see any of these bigger content creators out there and you're like, yeah. how am I going to get on their level? And you, you feel hopeless just go back to their first few videos and you'll be like, oh, wow, that's 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 right where I'm starting too." So <laughs> they have like this, you know, whole line of experience where they've been able to, you know, test and adjust and make mistakes. Um, you know, the more mistakes you can make early on in YouTube and mm -hmm. content creation, the better, because mm -hmm. then you're going to learn from those. Yeah. Um, even in filmmaking. You right. Know, you're like. Oh my word! I made an audio mistake, and my yeah. my actor wasn't hooked up, and now the audio is ruined. You're probably not going to make that mistake again. You're probably going to double mic that person or something, so you have good audio. So, uh, yeah, failure's uh, one of the greatest tutors out there. Yeah, speaking of uh, bad video, I um, you know this channel, Joe Media, right? I, I started 2009, and I remember 2009 is the first time actually 2008 I went to study film and. Uh, film and uh, television or whatever at N NYU as a crash course. Uh, I know how to shoot already, but I just don't know how to edit. I don't really know much about anything. I just shoot. So I have, I did my first work, editing work. It's called practice. If you type in practice and I look back, the storytelling was good, but the lighting was so bad. Uh, the color was so bad. Everything else is so bad, except the story was good. So I hesitate to leave it there, but I still left it there because I, you know, people can tell in the progress I made, you know, now I, I made a, a documentary, it, it's on Tubi, you know, so, but it took a while, right? It, so some people were asking, uh, uh, Michael uh, Eling, Michael Eling, uh, asking what are the mandatory tools for a good YouTube video? Yeah, I think the, the, the mandatory tools, I think the first one, and I know you're going to agree with me, uh, Ching, is your smartphone. Like, just pick this up and, and start recording with it because I think as long as you have your phone, like, and a, a less echoey room, like, you could start creating content right out the gate. Um, you know, you could set up your phone by like a window, you know, if possible, pick a cloudy day. So the lighting's pretty balanced. Um, and then, you know, you could just record that. Um, I think, yeah, the, the, the mandatory is, you know, you at least have a phone. Um, I do think lighting is really important for really good videos. So if you don't have lights, stand by a window and you can get that natural lighting. Um, and then if you do have money to spend, I'd probably get like a plug-in microphone, whether that be like a lavalier or you get a wireless one, um, just because I feel like audio is such an important part, especially for like, you know, YouTube videos and stuff that people hear you clearly. Um, what are your thoughts, Chain? Do you agree? Smartphone? Get started with that. Yeah, because everyone has a smartphone. Yeah, in my days, um, I started a video camera this, this big, you know, this big, very big and then get smaller, smaller, smaller. Now I start to use cell phone like from 2016. It's very hard for me to go back to the very heavy ones. You know, you need a chip, you need a battery charge, you need to bring three or four battery when you go out to assignment, you have to bring big microphone. Oh my God, the list goes on and on and on, you know. So now I, I, yeah, I shoot everything on smartphone and I think everyone has a smartphone and, and you have that in your pocket and you should use it and use it frequently. And the more you shoot, the, the better you become because no, ma no matter how many sessions like this, right? We tell you what to do or you watch like a thousand YouTube channel. It's like if, if you want to learn how to change a tire, you need to fucking do it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you need to 
you need to do it, right? I mean, yeah. you watch so much video, it doesn't help. So anyway, yeah, no, I agree with you. So what's our second thing? What is the second thing? So I think, yeah, other than just, yeah, getting your phone out and recording, I think the second thing um, for, what was it? Mandatory tools for a good YouTube video. Uh -huh. um, I think a good YouTube video also starts with a really good idea, uh -huh. um, which part of that I think involves knowing who you're making the video for. Uh -huh. um, so knowing that audience you're, you're trying to reach. So um, when you have that in mind, because I feel like, you know, with videos, you're either um, you're entertaining someone you're you know providing value like a tutorial you're giving information education um, or yeah or, or it could be like news like you're notifying someone of like a recent event so mm. i feel like you know youtube videos kind of fall into those three categories so um you know understanding that person you're trying to reach mm -hmm. um and and coming up with a good idea that'll actually add value to that person and mm -hmm. that'll reflect in you know what you title a video what you show in the thumbnail as well as like what do you say at the beginning of your video to mm -hmm. let them know that they landed in the right spot? Um, you know, if I'm talking about like the, the five best editing apps for iPhone mm. or something like that, you mm -hmm. know, I don't want to start my video off saying, Hey, my name is Colin. And on this channel, I do this. So I think mm -hmm. you should like and subscribe. And did you know I have a website? And it's like, I just want the content. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, making sure that when you do, once you do you know, have that camera set up, and you have that idea that you're, you know, you are thinking about the, you know, the viewer and, um, you know, finding, finding ways where you can add value and in the information without it, you know, going so long. Right. Right. And um, you are definitely a, one of the entrepreneur um, within our community. And by the way, I met you on Clubhouse. So for those of us, uh, those of us on, um, audience we have a lot of people by the way from our community let's uh, shout out for some people uh snow sugar video is uh, is my buddy uh my my neighbor uh, my tech supporter uh her name is yukiko and thank you for being with us and michael elaine is also a youtuber lewis is here hi lewis mary is here uh, Annette, thank you guys for being here. Mark, you know, Shuckfin, his real name is a Mark. So uh, Mark is here. And let's see, who has a Lalo? Hi, Lalo. Thanks for being here. Hey, and Lalo. yeah, Jessie Cat. Jessie Cat, hi. She's young and um, uh, like who, who else? Uh, do you know what's young Uh I don't think so, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on you. Yang Gen is my film is called My Yang Gen Diary. Yang Gen's are people supported Andrew Yen when he was running for president, uh, uh, primary presidential 2020. So I have some Yang Gen here. Nick Rivera also canvassed with me. And uh, let's see. Thank you guys for being here. It's nice to see all of you. Now, um, what was I saying? Um, oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, can you give me the link again? Because I, I kind of uh, screwed up. I don't know oh, where they no. are. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. I can get it pulled up here. In a yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so tell us, like, uh, what made you to, to wanting to write a book and how that process um, came about? Yeah. So what kind of inspired me to do a book um, I'm always looking for different ways where, you know, different avenues to explore. Like, you know, I've done video, um, you know, and photography and different things like that. Um, writing was one I hadn't gotten into yet. So, you know, I wanted to, first of all, just see that experience. What is it like to actually write a book and that whole process of, you know, coming up with the chapters, writing the content in there, you know, uploading it on Amazon. Um, and part of it is also like, I'll be honest, you know, the, 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 the vainness of it where it's like, you know, I have a book on Amazon. How cool. <laughs> like, um, so you know, that, that's part of it. It's cool. Uh -huh. Um, so, you know, I put it together. Um, and this was after I passed the, um, hundred thousand subscriber mark on oh. YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, you know, it, 
what it encompasses is like, you know, seven strategies that I believe, you know, helped me hit that hundred thousand subscriber mark. So I put those into a book. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I also kept it really simple too. Like, you know, it's not like a super long book. You could read it, um, in 30 minutes Mm -hmm. because, you know, with it being the YouTube shortcut, I wanted it to be a shortcut. I didn't want, I've, I've read a lot of books where it's like a lot of filler and there's not a lot of the good content spaced out. So I was like, you know, why am I going to do that? Why would I write all this stuff in here? I'm just going to mm-hmm. drop all the content here. Um, essentially a glorified blog post. And, you know, that way someone can pick it up, read it and go apply those, those strategies to their channel. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I think also for yourself, right, writing it down also it helps you to organize your thought, right? And it's good for your preaching or teaching or spread the word, isn't it? Yeah, just having something, you know, on Amazon kind of, you know, puts me out there as an authority. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, yeah, it kind of, um, you know, just that the process of uh you know, getting all my thoughts and putting them onto paper. You know, mm. I'm not the world's greatest writer. Um, it definitely does not come. That does that part does not come to me naturally. Mm. Uh, if my teaching skills come naturally, the mm-hmm. writing doesn't. Um, so, you know, I pushed through it. I, you know, took the time each day to to work on the project, and mm-hmm. uh, took me a while, but I was able to, you know, get it out. Yeah. So everybody, go go buy um, <laughs> Colin's uh, Colin's uh, book. It's only. A dollar, <laughs> what? Yes, 14? <laughs> that's a funny. <laughs> Very easy. You can either pick it up for a dollar, or if you have the the Kindle Unlimited subscription, you get it for free. So it's very, you know, if you're getting started, you know, ninety nine cents isn't a big commitment. Yeah. Um. And yeah, so, you know, my my thought too is like, you know, it's not a people don't have to worry about it being a money grab. I get thirty five cents per sale, so oh my God. um, I'm I'm giving more value than I'm yeah. I'm, I'm receiving in that book. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So uh, talking about money, um, can you give us a little shade shade, uh, with us, uh, shine some light with us is say someone became monetized after 1000 subscribers and 400,000 viewing share? Is it 4000? 400,000? No, 4000. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, a thousand subs and then 4,000 uh, watch hours. Yeah. So um, now what kind of expectation people should have? Do they think they're going to be rich right away? Or like, like say you you make a video of 20 minutes. Uh, every time somebody watch through the whole thing, how much filmmaker or YouTuber will get money from YouTube? So if one person watching through, it is some weird fraction less than a cent, probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's a lot of people oh my God. <laughs> who are really after that YouTube like AdSense. And then when they get it and they just make a couple of cents, they're like, oh, uh, this is interesting. Um, so uh, it, it does. There, there is a way where you can make a good amount of money, though. Um, and part of it is like what the way Google works with like their ads is advertisers want to get in front of specific people. And so depending how valuable that audience is, they like bid to see who gets, you know, which ad put there. Uh, So for example, you know, something with like a kid's gaming channel, that's not very valuable to advertisers because kids can't buy stuff. So a lot of those creators make like a dollar or $2 per thousand views. Um, whereas someone who might be in like business or they might have like an outdoors channel or finance or investing, um, that is valuable to advertisers because that usually, you know, like finance and investing usually attracts a more older, mature audience and they have money to spend because they're interested in like in investing. So advertisers will spend a lot of money to get in front of those people and those creators can make like 15 to $30 per thousand views with uh, the ads. Um, so depending, you know, how many views you get, it can be lucrative. Um, like on my channel, I average around 500 to 600,000 views a month. Um, so it, it remains pretty steady for me, like the AdSense I received. Um, but I think the, the real goal with like getting monetized on YouTube, um, is being able to either sell other people's products, like through affiliate marketing or brand sponsorships, 
or to create your own products through like courses, like my digital book, um, or, um, you know, physical products too, because you can sell those as well. So mm -hmm. that, I think that those are the more lucrative sides of when it comes to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now there's, uh, some, uh, spam going on. I have gotten some emails to me said, Oh, I am so-and-so I'm, you know, this company, that company, we want to offer you so, so such a such money and please send us your stuff. So I usually always delete those things. So how do you know which one is authentic, which one are spam? Spam. Yeah. When people start reaching out to you, there's a few different ways you can tell. Um, the first one is if there's misspelling, you know, a real brand isn't going to misspell in their email. Um, I think the second one is if they're, you want to look at what, e where, where are they emailing you from? You know, someone will be claiming that they're from, um, let's just pick an obvious one here. Let's say like it's Best Buy. They're like, we want, we want to send you a camera and you do a sponsorship or something. Um, and then you look at the email and it's like someone's name at gmail.com. You know, it's why would Best Buy won't send an email from Gmail? It'll be at the website.com. So you can always take that website, go over to Google, and look it up to see what is this, um, if it's actually legit, if it's not. Um, and probably the third one would be um, if they're rushing. And this one might be harder because sometimes brands really want to get content out. But it's sort of like really... Uh, like rushing and pushing you, like you need to click this link, you need to read this paragraph, you need to, you know, like I, I think the best thing you can do is just never click a link. Um, if someone sends you a link, just don't click it. Unless you are like, unless they paid you money already and you know for sure that this is a real brand, I wouldn't click on the link because um, that'll, that'll screw you up. Like if someone sends you like a PDF of some information about their brand, you just reply back and be like, we have a no, no click, uh, no link clicking policy. So if you could just copy the, the details of this brand deal and, you know, send them back in an email, that'd be great. Thank you for understanding. If they don't, they're probably a, probably a scam. Mm. So those are the kind of things I look at. Wow. Wow. That's good to know. That's, that's very good to know. So uh, we have another question from Michael. Hi, Michael. Given that YouTubers have been uh, complaining about some of the YouTube monetization policy, have you considered other channel and is YouTube still going to relevant for content providers? Yeah, I, I do think YouTube's still going to be relevant regardless of their, their new policies. Like the new one that just came out for those who um, may, may not have heard, they, they have a new policy regarding like um, swearing and like what can be shown in like the first few seconds of your video and that affecting <laughs> right i was gonna yell at you Chase, you, did, you did it in the middle you did it in the middle so oh, that's probably fine as they're not gonna like, watching me <laughs> don't tell um, <laughs> yeah so like with that like there were some you know policy changes but i think for anyone who wants to like monetize their following i think youtube is the best platform um not only because like you know, if you post on another platform like TikTok or Instagram, that content gets posted. It lives for like a week max, maybe a little bit longer, and then no one ever sees it again. Whereas YouTube um, is like, you know, you know, it's a part of Google. YouTube is the second biggest search engine. Uh, people come to YouTube to watch content. And like I have videos from years ago that are still getting views like that. Uh, like that one video I made that um, back in the day, that splice tutorial I was talking about that helped me get those initial subscribers, that video still gets views. And it says 2019 update for the editor. And for some reason, people are like, ooh, this this is how I edit on this app in 2019. Let me click on this. And it's like, it's 2022, it's 2023. Why are you still watching this video? <laughs> um, so there's such longevity with your videos and they can, mm -hmm. You know, you, you set them up right where you might be promoting one of your product or services or someone else's, you can really create passive income um, with this. Because once that video is up, it lives on for years. And if you have like the right video and you're making the right call to action and you're adding value, that video will work on for you forever. And you get enough of those videos going 
um, you just have these streams of income going, not only from YouTube AdSense, if you get enough views there, um, but I think like the affiliate links are lucrative um, and also, um, you know, promoting your own products and services. Um, and maybe one other thing to mention with it too, um, YouTube has now added integration with Shopify for YouTube. So now what you can do is you can sell your products and services on Shopify and they'll actually be tagged underneath your YouTube videos. So, wow. you know, as I'm doing a video, if I want to bring up like, you know, maybe I'll put my book up on, you know, Shopify mm -hmm. and then under all my YouTube videos, there'll be a little promotion there saying, you know, buy my book on every one. So even if I didn't mention the book, it'll always be advertised underneath my videos. Um, and what I've heard from creators who already have their products up like they're just getting sales just because, you know, people watch your content, they grow to like and trust you. And they're like, hey, this guy's selling a product. He's selling mm -hmm. a service. They can click that and uh, be able to purchase for you. So, um, yeah, I don't see YouTube going anywhere in the next, you know, like decade. Um, mm -hmm. And it just continues to grow and they keep offering more on opportunities for people to, to monetize. Yeah, so... Very good, very good. And that's good to know, though. So there's so many different ways of uh, um, doing business with YouTube because because the, the visibility of YouTube, like you said, is longevity. And also people do spend time, right? They sit there, they can watch a longer, uh, sh a longer version of a video where TikTok is, they expect to just watch a short, uh, a short video. Now, uh, I have a question myself is, I kind of know, but I don't know, is I understand two important thing to get viewer to kick, uh, click your content is uh, one of them uh, is a uh, thumbnail. So how and um, what, um, how do you do thumbnail? Yeah, so, um... For, for thumbnails, yeah, the, that, that's one of like the, you know, the three most important parts of getting someone to click on your video. Um, so I think the, the key with thumbnails is you want it to be simple and easy to understand and just very clear. Um, what oftentimes happens, and I know I made this mistake in my earlier days, is I had just too many things going on in my thumbnail. Like I had this logo and I had this text here and I had all these photos and different things like that. Um, so, but once I simplified my thumbnails and it put so many elements in there and just try to either communicate value or provoke curiosity, that's what caused my, my thumbnails to perform really well. So I'll usually stick with three elements. You know, if you can see on screen there, like I'll have myself on the side so people can recognize my face. If you have your face in a thumbnail, it usually works really well. Cause if your video ever pops up on the homepage and there's all these videos there, They'll be like, oh, hey, look, there's Colin's face. He has a new video. I'll go check it out. Um, so that's one element I use. I usually also use like a logo or something. So you can see I have like a YouTube logo. I have a CapCut logo there. And then I'll put a little bit of text underneath. So I usually is it, keep it. Oh, is yeah, it a ahead. problem? Sorry. Is it a problem to use the YouTube arrow? Like, would they mind? Are there copyright issues? With the YouTube arrow. Yeah, like the red thing and the arrow. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you, you should be fine using that. Like, I grabbed, if you see that YouTube logo I have up, like, that was just from Canva. I believe you can use it for free right from Canva. So it's like mm -hmm. a free stock image. Yeah. Um, I've never run into issues if I use someone's element on a thumbnail. Um, uh -huh. I'm also not a legal expert, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I've never had issues personally, like, you know, I've never had like CapCut be upset that I'm, you know, I'm using their logo or something like that because it's kind of like fair use realm ish. Um, but yeah, so I'll, yeah, I'll sometimes have the logo there. Yeah. And then I'll have, I'll have text. Now, usually I'll keep it to like three to four words, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I won't go too far out of that because you got to think there's all these different thumbnails competing to get the viewer's attention. So, you have to be able to communicate the value the video is going to provide in a really short amount of time. So if there's too much going on there. Like if I had too much text, you know, yeah. someone's not going to sit there and read it all. They're just, you know, like half a second looking at it. So if someone looks at this, you know, like my CapCut tutorial there, they can look at it, see the CapCut logo, see editing tutorial 2022. Yeah. yeah. Like, Oh, I know what this video is about. This makes, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. 
That's awesome. And can I can I have a a a a, a tutorial just just very short from you? Um, I learned so much from Clubhouse, right? So I've been doing uh, what do you call? Um, I've been doing. Um, oh, by the way, this is my channel. Hey, this is you. Uh, you, you see, YouTube's new interface is very tricky. Videos, shorts, live, and then the rest. So so that I have to make videos now once a week. I do live anyway. So this is my live. Uh, my live has a little bit more consistent. What do you think? Yeah, so the, the two photos on either side, I have seen that a lot in different interviews. Um, the one th the one thing that might um, I will like the the text with the with the photo background, it, it kind of feels like almost like it it shouldn't be there, um, like like it almost feels like the text needs its own spot. Um, what what usually is the best thing to do? Because um, you know, even though I've had experience with thumbnails, like you know, every channel is going to be different with thumbnails. And I'm always learning as I go on further and learn new things. But one thing that has really helped me with thumbnails is looking at other people either in my niche or creating the same type of content as me and looking at how they did their those thumbnails. So what might be the best strategy to do is look at some of those top interview, you know, their podcasts have a lot of interviews. Kind of look how they do their thumbnails. Like you'll see they'll have like a, you know, I'm just thinking of, for example, like Impulsive's a really big podcast out there. Like they'll have like a, a colorful background. They'll have like the person they're interviewing on one side and then the other person on the other side. And then sometimes in the middle, they'll have some like text or different elements or something like that. Mm. Um, or or Colin and Samir uh, are another popular oh, can like, you, interview. Can you, can you type one and then I, we can take a look now? Do oh, you yeah. so what is your suggestion my uh thumbnail is it too busy i think it looks too busy um i think that's their other the other one there i think it looks a little bit busy with the text in the background there like the like the yellow text you know it kind of like mingles in with your photo there um so I wonder if I can pull up a good. Yeah, um, you you send it to me, then I I can post. You send yeah, or right, you did already. So which one? Oh, uh, impulsive. Okay, impulsive. Uh, what is impulsive talking about? Yeah, it's a it's like a, a general. It's like a podcast by uh, um, Logan Paul. It's one of the the bigger ones out there. They do a lot of different interviews and stuff. Oh. Um. But that's their main thing is they are they interview people on their podcast. Um, but one of the main things they focus on, I'll try to find another example here. But the main thing they focus on is making um, like they have a blank background and then they make the faces of the person they're interviewing really big. Um, uh, sorry. Hey, wait, I think I found it. Uh, is that the impulsive? Let's see. Uh, there's like a two people, right? Two heads. And yes. then they oh okay oh yeah that's a very big head <laughs> yes so they make big them really head. big because you know whoever you're interviewing uh -huh. you know they're you know they're using their name and the title and stuff yeah but because their heads are so big you yeah. can easily recognize oh hey that's Logan Paul the interviewee and oh uh -huh. look he has this person on there you know related to um, you know whoever they're interviewing so the people who uh -huh. like the person they're interviewing yeah. sees that person's head really big. Oh. And they're like, oh, I, I recognize that face. Um, and then they see but the title. Who is, who is the interview who? Oh, so the girl is the interview guy. Okay. So so, so the guy yeah. on the right is the, the main interviewee. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. So the left person always is the interviewer, right? Yeah, okay, usually okay. for those. Okay. Cool. But for them, you know, that, that has worked really well for, for them and their strategy. And they just keep repeating that process because it's getting uh -huh. them views. Uh -huh. Um. But, yeah. you know, with that, like, you know, you got the, there's not too much going on there. It's basically just the two faces. So uh -huh. they're using like two elements there uh -huh. um, out of the, you know, the three max that's usually recommended for thumbnails. Um, so even, even something like that, 
I was trying to find a. But you know what? I see. I see one imperfection, uh, impulsive in their uh, in their uh, uh, what do you call it? thumbnail? The timer covered their brand. Do you see it? Yeah, I do see it. Yeah. Um, they should wonder... have put in the left. They should have. I think that the, their reasoning behind it, they do upload on a lot of different platforms. Uh -huh. So they're probably reusing that photo on a few different ones for their, their podcasting and stuff. I see. So I think they're probably just reusing it. But yeah, normally you, would, you wouldn't want to put anything over there because, yeah, the, you know, the timestamp just covers it up. No one can yeah. you know, see that writing there. Right. And also, does it is it a possible... Oh, not possible. Is it a, a kosher? See, right now I'm clicking on their video, right? Has nothing to do with the thumbnail right now. It's two guys talking. Mm -hmm. So it's not the girl and the guy talking. So I'm just questioning. Is the thumbnail has to be coming from or relevant to the content? It should be relevant to the content. Um, I'm not sure if in that video they end up interviewing her or they just didn't show the, the person they're talking to. At least mm -hmm. in that one, it looks like they've got the, yeah, the guy they're one. interviewing. Yeah, this one. Um, yeah. But yeah, you always want it related to the content. You don't want to, you know, bait and switch someone, mm -hmm. um, you know, and pretend like you're interviewing someone and really you're not. Because um, then people are just, you know, going to leave your video right away and that's just mm -hmm. going to, you know, hurt the video. Right. Right. And then, then the second thing, the first thing is a uh, thumbnail, or maybe that's a second thing. But then the other thing is title. Title means, you know, the, the, it's not description, it's a title, right? So it's important, it has to be a keyword. What do you mean keyword? Like, for instance, uh, say I am interviewing Colin Michael. Uh, it, it, my title is live interview, Colin. Uh, Col Colin, Col Colin, Colin, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Colin, Colin Michael, content creator. What else should I do to catch people's eye? Yeah, so I think there, there, there's two ways to go about it. Um, at least on the interview side, like obviously using the name of the person you're interviewing, I think is important um, because then YouTube can see Colin Michael. This video has obviously Colin Michael in the title. We obviously have said Colin Michael in the video and YouTube can actually listen to the entire video and what we're talking about. And they'll know that, oh, I, I recognize that's Colin's face in the video. They have said Colin Michael in the video. This video, this interview is about Colin Michael. And based on that, they're able to, you know, this video might pop up in the search results. People look for my name. Um, and it also might pop up, you know, suggested or on the homepage for people who have watched my content potentially. Um, but I think the, the the main thing that a lot of interviews capitalize is like uh, persuasion and, um, you know, uh, showing, you know, trying to provoke curiosity and get people to click. So, um, like, I've seen some people who, who have interviewed me, um, they've done like from cart pusher to full time content creator, you know, Colin Michael interview, like something like that. It's like, whoa. This, I'm interested to see how someone went from, you know, pushing carts at a hardware store to becoming a full-time creator. That's interesting. I want to hear that story. So they click and, and watch. Right. So um, it does take some time to just sit down yeah. and write down a few different titles I and see. find different ways to try to make them more intriguing or curiosity provoking or, uh, you know, maybe, maybe value giving. So maybe it's yeah. like Colin Michael shares his uh, secret. 100,000 subscribers secret. You know, it's like, ooh, wow, I want to, you know, I'm going to get that value. Okay. Um, and, and one tool you can use too to like help with that, um, to, you know, more recent tool that came out that I've been using is ChatGBT, um, where I'll actually go on um, to the, you know, this, you know, AI, you know, ChatGBT um, service. And I'll put, you know, I'll tell it, you know, write 10 headlines for this YouTube title and I'll put it in there and click enter and it'll list out a whole bunch of different, you know, combinations and things. And it's like, Oh, here's, here's, you know, this one, I can take some inspiration from there and some inspiration from that one. And that also gives you some more ways to, you know, reword your titles. So you said it's called chat GBT. It is a website. 
Yeah. So if you, if you, the, the easiest way would be able to do is go, you know, just Google search like chat GBT and you'll get the website pulled up. Uh -huh. um, but it's basically like an AI that has been mm -hmm. like loaded with a lot of information and can like respond to your queries. Um, it's a little difficult to explain, but mm -hmm. basically it has the ability to write content for you. Um, and it, it's just like knowledgeable because they're like, how much information can we put into a computer and then allow people to interact with that information? And so you can ask it something and it'll hopefully spit out the right answer. Um, yeah. But it also has like other you know practical uses for it. Like um, I was writing a script and I didn't know how to do the outro. So I asked chat GBT to write an outro for <laughs> a, uh, you know, the ending of a course. And it gave out this whole thing and it wasn't perfect. You know, it's AI, it's still learning and yeah. you know, where it's going to adapt over time. But I was still able to like, oh yeah, those are, you know, good ideas of what I could cover in an outro. And so, you know, I took that, put it in there. It got me out of my writer's block and helped me go in. So it's definitely something to check out and mess around with, um, but useful for YouTube titles. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's good to know. And speaking of uh, title, and I was wishing... Uh, that YouTube would automatically uh, uh, caption my content. So tell me a little bit about, um, say, our conversation right now. After uh, this session is over, it's going to be uh, replayed on this channel. And people have to click on CC, right, for, for getting the caption. What do you call closed caption? Are there any way that it will automatically just do that? What if people don't know how? Um, I, I don't know if there's a, an automatic way to do it. Um, I do feel like YouTube has been around for a while to where, you know, a lot of people, you know, have kind of, you know, figured out video and how to do captions. Uh, but at least as of right now, there's no way to like automatically add them. Uh, you could always use like video editing software to add auto captions and then they'll always be on screen no matter what. Um, but at least the YouTube ones, there's no, you know, check this box to make sure it always uh, starts going with the captions on. And what about foreign language? Because I have a lot of uh, Chinese people, they do not read English. Uh, are they a foreign language possibility? In the future, there is. Right now in India, they are beta testing where when you click on a video, you can actually change it to your language. So they'll, um, the entire video, so you, you know, in, and I'm sure in the next year or two, we're going to see this on all our videos and it's going to be amazing, is Google right now has a beta software that I've actually been able to test a bit um, where you can upload your video you know, choose which language you want it to be in and it'll make a voiceover in that language. And before it goes up, you can make sure like, you know, it actually correctly heard everything you said. And so you'll actually get like an AI voice to, uh, you know, speak that, speak the, the person's language to exactly what they're saying. Wow. Um, so That's India crazy. is doing that right now. I think it's just related to health content. Um, but anyone in India, they watch a video, they can easily switch the language to whatever language they speak and be able to get like that important information. Um, so I, you know, and so I'm sure that's going to end up coming over to the US eventually. And yeah, we won't even have to worry about like, oh, man, I need captions for Chinese or Spanish or French. It'll just all be in there. We'll just wow. be able to oh, switch that to my language. And, you know, the video will be translated audibly uh, for the viewer. That's that's such awesome. That's awesome. And uh, our friend uh, Snow Sugar video said uh, use uh, Jim. What do you say? Chip, chip, Jim. <laughs> uh, well, how do you say that? Oh, clip, clip, Jim audio CC. And then also, um, who else? Uh, that Apple Hustler. Is it Lady Hustler? Hi, Lady Hustler. Uh, Power Direct is that an app? Power Direct. Yeah, Power Director is a, a video editor for for mobile devices. Uh, um, and then it looks like Snow Sugar also said, um, yeah, Capcut teaches has a uh, auto closed captions too. Where yeah, for you if you yeah. put your video into Capcut, you can click auto captions and it'll add it all in. Awesome. Yeah, and you are a um, very um, skilled uh, Capcut uh, user. 
So tell us a little bit about. It seems like that that app has so many features. Yeah. So I, I think the reason why is it's actually created by ByteDance, which are the creators of TikTok. So they've got a lot of like you know all the TikTok funding behind them, and I think they've also just learned from people using you know TikTok as itself and their whole creation process over there. So yeah, they've piled that thing full of. You know features that some like professional editors don't have, um, like for example the, the ability to remove a background without a green screen. Like a lot of the like you know Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, which is what I edit with mainly. Like I have to have a green screen, and there's CapCut just removing it for me without a green screen. So um, yeah, there's I saw a lot you of had one. I, I saw you had one with two person dancing. Oh yes, yes, I do have that as well. Um, yeah, where you can duplicate yourself. There's so many cool, cool things you can do in there. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit. Now, I mentioned earlier that YouTube has like this interface now uh, with videos, shorts, and live. Do you like that, or do you not like that? Tell me. I do like it. Um, Why? Mainly because back in the day, if you uploaded a short, you couldn't make a thumbnail for it. And so, in the video section, you'd have all these nice videos with thumbnails, and they have all these weird vertical ones on your computer, taking up all the, you know, it, it was very cluttered and messy. So yeah, yeah, um, you know, vertical, just, horizontal, vertical. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then lives were in there too. So I do like that. You know, if I want to watch someone's videos, I can go there. If I want to check out a previous live stream, they're all organized. Then if I just want to watch some shorts that someone put out, I can just go to that section too. So um, I just think it keeps everything, you know, clean looking, mm -hmm. um, you know, and if you want that, you know, more of that content, just right when people visit, you can always edit your YouTube channel homepage um, and create playlists of content. So if you want people to, you know, you can always just rearrange your, your homepage to look how you want, but then at the same time, it's also, you know, organized in a way somewhere else. Yeah. So do you feel you need to do uh, at least one video a week, one short a week, one live a week? How do you um, spread your energy? So normally I try to aim for one a week for videos. Um, for shorts... Um, because coming up uh, February 1st of 2023, um, shorts will be monetized. I haven't figured out that content schedule yet, but at least for long form videos, I usually aim for one a week uh, just so that way there's always like newer content coming out. I see. I see. I, I, I was looking for your, um, yeah, your uh, shorts. It's very funny. Yeah, I've got a few interesting shorts on there. A lot of editing uh, tricks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I plan to, you know, once this rolls out and also um, shorts will eventually have the ability to tag your own products where you could promote like a course or a book or a physical product or different things like that. Um, and I think shorts are a really great way to grow your channel if you're starting out because it doesn't take a lot of time to create a short. Um, and you have a huge potential for it to, you know, get a lot of views. Um, you know, like I was saying earlier, I have two siblings that got over a thousand subs in a really short period of time, you know, and yeah. have been able to build that following. Um, so I think doing both is, you know, definitely the way I'll end up going here in the future. And on shorts, um, for a while, people say you do not need to do uh, of course you cannot do thumbnail is it always necessary to do a description like a, a type the letter on or just do plain for for shorts yeah um I'll, i i want to say for at least right now we'll see how it changes but the description is in a really weird spot mm. you have to like click on these three dots that yeah. no one will ever really click on and then the description's there no not description um, sorry sorry i mean the letter on top of uh, the video like you click on a a you know a b c d e f g and then you type on something like describe you know say say if it's a dancing right or ballroom dancing and then i say ballroom dancing is it necessary? Um, I don't think necessarily. Um, you know, YouTube sh 
the YouTube algorithm is pretty smart. So whether you, you know, actually put that there or not, like YouTube, YouTube's AI is nuts. Like if I, if I hold this up, YouTube looks at this and is like, we're like 90% sure that this is an iPhone he's holding. If I have like some recognizable like mountain range behind me, YouTube can pinpoint my geography location. Wow. Like that's how crazy it does analyzing each and every one of our videos. Yeah. So if, if, uh, if it sees people are ballroom dancing, it can identify that and can recommend that to people interested in ballroom dancing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, shorts wise, you know, um, you know, title wise isn't as important, um, but it's still probably a good idea because shorts see. are searchable. People can search for those and find those. I actually get a lot of views from shorts uh, from search. Um, so it's still probably a good idea to, you know, have whatever the video is, you know, be in the title. Yeah. And looking at your shorts, right? Uh, first of all, I, I look at the dates. For, for me to know which date, I have to go click on the three dots. And, oh, not this one. And then uh, some somehow... Oh, oh yeah, I have the biggest this. social media strategy that TikTok is teaching everyone so is to I have replicate to, oh, what sorry. is working on platforms. Oh. TikTok has taught us and that I if something's trending, this, we make it in our own I way. And all that's doing right. is you're just but anyway, my, my point is it's actually in a way it's good because I can tell from this interface that how often you do this. Right. Right, yeah. Like I'm I'm sure they'll update it where they'll have like dates of whenever content oh. was posted. Okay. Um but but even still, you know, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people aren't necessarily looking at dates, they're more of looking at okay, what, what content are they actually putting out? Yeah. Um, and if it's like a video I want to click on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also in this uh in looking at your shorts, you talk about video game, you talk about video viral, and you talk about different things. So but one thing is consistent. You're pretty much your face is right there. Most of them, right? So that's important, I think. But you're not talking about one niche. Right? So so usually, like, a lot of these are in the video editing spot. It's either I'm on, I'm talking video editing, or I'm usually talking about, like, YouTube growth. Because um, those kind of, like, mingle together. Um a lot of people trying to learn how to make videos on their phone are trying to learn YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I usually end up talking on that quite a bit. Um, okay. But I do think, you know, you don't, you know, if I go and film a video of like my parent at my parents' house of their chickens and mm -hmm. it blows up and gets like a million views. Now all of a sudden I have all these subscribers who are interested in chickens. You know, <laughs> if I go outside my niche, it's not going to, you know, it's probably not good. They're like, where are the chicken videos? We, I saw it on your short. <laughs> Um, so I do think niching in the shorts yeah. is pretty important too. Oh yeah. I asked you earlier, you know, privately I say, is it okay for me to do music? Cause I'm a musician and to do video, you know, and you don't, you think I should separate, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, if people enjoy the, the shorts on music, they're, they'll subscribe and then they'll watch those shorts on music. Um, but if they subscribe for music and they get filmmaking, they're like, I want to be a filmmaker. I want to, I want to, you know, uh, hear you play your music. So I think keeping them separate, you know, and it's easy enough to just make a second channel too. Uh -huh. um, you know, I think that'll ultimately help you, you know, grow more and get more people to watch your videos. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, we have um, our friend uh, Nick Rivera uh, bought your book. Thank awesome. you. Nick. Yeah. So you guys go buy the book. It's only a dollar. Or you just not not even as much as a coffee, you know. <laughs> what can you do by a dollar these days? Oh my god, parking maybe in Queens. <laughs> you can't even get a candy bar. You can't even get a candy bar for a dollar anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. So yeah, hi now. Now is uh the the my film's poster designer and Yangan, another Yangan. Thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, so let's see anything uh you guys have any other questions? We are going to wrap up because it's uh, um, after one hour. Oh, I wanted to ask you, tell people, uh, when do you talk on Clubhouse? They should come on to Clubhouse if they don't. It, it's yes, their loss. They absolutely should come They're to Clubhouse. Lost. <laughs> so tell us, tell, us, tell us why people have to go and visit Clubhouse. 
you should visit Clubhouse because not only will you, you know, you can do the comment thing, but on Clubhouse, you can actually come up on stage, you can interact, you can ask questions, but also just all the other people on Clubhouse. Um, there's a lot of people there who are even more you know, knowledgeable than me sharing their insights and stuff like that. So when you, when you're part of that, not only is it social, but you know, there's just so much valuable information you get from that platform. I've gotten such a great, you know, return on investment from being there and made some great friends. Um, so, you know, surrounding yourself with people who are either where you want to be or where you want to go, um, or who are also, you know, have those same goals and ambitions. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. More people need to be on clubhouse. How did you get out? I got on back during the craze where it was like invite only. Um, so my brother, he had a friend invite him and he was like, oh, I got it. You want to get in? I'm like, yes. Um, so uh, yeah, that was back then. It was even crazier than it is today because you'd have like, you'd go up on stage and the person next to you who's like speaking, you can interact with has like a million subscribers. And it's like, I can just talk to this person, interact, ask them questions. Um, and there's still a few of those people who come on the platform still. It's not as cr crazy as it was back in like 2020 when no one had anything better to do but be on their phone and talk with other people socially through an app. Um, but still amazing. It's really great. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. And tell us when is your room? It's called Yeah, so I host rooms Monday through Friday on there, usually 9:30 Central Time. Um, and it's usually all things social media. So we talk like YouTube, uh, Amazon, Instagram, TikTok. We usually cover all those different topics. So uh, if you do show up, um, you're sure to you know walk away with uh, something new you'll learn. So it's, it's a great time. Yeah. If you join Clubhouse, you should do some very minimum uh, homework. You should put a biography there, right? Tell people yes. who you are. If you have an Instagram, you should link to your Instagram because a lot of people hesitate to accept you to go on stage because uh, you never know. Some people, you know, like a fake or bots or what do you call <laughs> spammers. <laughs> so yes. at least if you have some kind of reference, right, either uh, Twitter or Instagram, right? So people feel comfortable to welcome you in this community. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We, yeah. we need to know that you're a real person. <laughs> yeah. 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 And also I need to chip in, chime in is um, I've been hosting a room, a club called smartphone video production and Colin, you should come because you're an expert. And I've been doing that for consistently this Friday, which is in two days, 100 weeks nonstop. Oh, Keepers, congrats on that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, nonstop. Even when I'm in airport, right? I, I hosting it. Even when I'm in Greece, I was in Greece uh, uh, during the festival this summer. I still host it. So talking about consistency. Yeah, that's some serious consistency there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the the other uh, chime in is uh, I made an entire uh, feature documentary, ninety minutes on iPhone eleven. That's also sort of a, a motivate me to have a room so I can share my experience with people. So that movie now is on Tubi. Tubi, it's free. Okay, you can watch it, and you have no excuse not to watch it. <laughs> so some people are in the film uh, in, in our audience Nick Riviera is my uh, canvas mate and Nell uh, also uh, contributed to, to uh, design the the poster and also Nell was uh, on in the film as well yeah he's also a New York young man so anyway thank you so much anything else uh, um, do you have anything you want to chime like a promo, uh, letting people know? Yeah. So outside of the book, if you want to take it a step further, I do have, if you go to my website, uh, colinmichael.com, uh, I just released a course called Channel Launch, uh, which in just seven days, uh, you'll learn how to build a highly optimized YouTube channel that attracts viewers, subscribers, and leads. So if you are at that spot, you know, whether you 
brand new to YouTube or you've had a channel for a while and you're like, why am I not getting views? Why am I not getting subscribers? I'll walk through you know, the whole process of how, how do you make your channel page optimized, your videos optimized, ranking videos in search, um, you know, just sharing that full process. So that way, you know, you start on a really good foundation and um, can get monetized. So, yeah, I'm super excited about that. I've been putting a lot of work into it. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, definitely worth checking awesome. out. Awesome, awesome. And uh, before we uh, answer Nell's question, I actually have another question for you is that check uh, Colin's uh, website. There is a button called join now. It used to be something else. Join means you support him. You become a member. So I, I kind of like fill the forum and I'm hesitating to do that. Because I feel like I don't, I'm not comfortable doing that. So tell us a little bit of how and how that works. Yeah. So the join button, um, if you set it up on YouTube once you're monetized, yeah, it allows people to support you. Um, it's basically a membership you can set up. So if you want, like I had it enabled for like $2 that people could just support me on a monthly basis if they want to and they're enjoying my content. Um, you can make more tiers where you can have like exclusive content or, you know, exclusive group. You can go, you know, add more expensive tiers. Um, the only downside is it's a 70-30 a split. So YouTube mm. takes 30% of whatever that money is, so, which is quite a lot. You got 30% there. You got 30% from taxes. You're left with 40%. Mm. Um, if you, you know, end up keeping it all, basically. Um, so... You know, I just have at least that part enabled just because and, and people will. They'll just do it. Um, you'll be surprised that there are people out there who are like, yes, I enjoy this content. I want to keep seeing it going. Um, and there'll be a two dollar supporter, um, you know, and you get enough of those. You know, it's a little bit of extra income, another income stream that exists that, you know, can help you keep making content, keep making a, a difference in the world. So, yeah, I was just uh, looking for your. Uh, so this is the button. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's joint. But it used to be not this word. It's something else. I forgot. So anyway, yeah, if you want to support uh, uh, Colin and feel free. And I am going to also try to do that, but I still feel not very comfortable. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time. You know, I, I grew up in communist country. You know, we're supposed to do things free for people, you know, like, like communist, right? <laughs> You're mm -hmm. supposed to serve people for free. Uh, now has had a question. Uh, and after that, we're going to do a rapid fire and then we finish hopefully before six, whatever, 20 maybe. Uh, so what other platforms besides do you recognize for anyone looking to spread out their video content? Yeah, so other platforms outside of YouTube, uh, TikTok is super easy to get your content like seen by a lot of people. Their algorithms really good at promoting stuff. Um, Facebook, I think, is still worth it. Facebook has their own creator programs going on, so I do think it, you know you could try that as well. Um, but I think, um, and then maybe Instagram Reels. Um, those are usually the, you know, it's meta, TikTok, and YouTube all battling it out. So I think those are the main ones if you want to be seen um, to put your content up on. Um, maybe one other, um, darn it, what is it called? Um, just Pinterest. Pinterest is another one. I was thinking of a different one. Um, Mark said all. Mark said Facebook, Instagram, Rio, TikTok. Instagram real Mark, where's your Instagram? I want to see it. Uh, Pinterest, LinkedIn. <laughs> I always bug Mark. Yeah, if I think of it here, or see this here, I'll, I'll let you know. But I mean, those are a good start. Those usually have like the majority. Oh, Rumble. Rumble's another oh. one you could do. Oh. Um, Rumble exists out there where you could upload videos as well. This sounds like, this sounds like an action movie. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> um it, it's like uh for for people who do swear at the beginning of their videos uh they could upload on rumble rumble has very low restrictions over there where you can oh. still you know make money from your videos so yeah um, that's another option oh, oh oh sorry sorry i have so many questions so tell people a little bit briefly what is amazon which is we talk about a lot on uh clubhouse 
Amazon. Yeah. So, well, Influencer. Amazon, more, more specifically, like the Amazon Influencer Program, um, we can briefly talk about that. You know, it, you know, definitely check it out and explore it. Um, but basically, Amazon now has a program where you can upload videos on products and get paid a commission if people watch your videos on Amazon. So, you know, if I, you know, I, if you're thinking about buying an iPhone, you scroll down, you might see my video on the iPhone talking about, you know, my favorite parts about it. Um, and if you watch that video and then make a purchase on Amazon, you get paid a commission. So um, not necessarily like the greatest platform to like, you know, re-upload content, but it's also a really good income stream if you can, you know, get in. Um, normally you need like at least 2000 subscribers or followers somewhere. Um, but, you know, it is very lucrative, you know, it's very easy because Amazon's driving all the traffic to you and, and you just make commissions when people watch the videos. So very easy. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Yeah, I'm, I'm in it already. Oh, um, my God. Oh yeah. My God. So I've got like uh, pretty close to like 450 videos uploaded on there. Wow. Um, so I've, I've been I've been cranking them out over the last few months. So um, and yeah, it's great. You know, uh, we, we like to say on Clubhouse, it's life changing money, like thousands of dollars a month. Um, and it, and you're doing nothing because Amazon's bringing all the traffic to the products and you're just that little push at the end of them buying that says, you know, um, you know, here's my thoughts on it. This blue color I like. It takes good pictures. I recommend it. And, and that's like the end of the video. It's not super fancy or anything. If you if you if you want to explore it, you know, you can Google Amazon Influencer Program. Yeah. Um, you can also if you click on any product and scroll down a bit, you'll see a video section. When you click on those, it'll say earns commissions in like the top corner. Those are Amazon influencers. And that's just, you know, people talking about all the products in their house and uh, how much they love them. Wow. That's that's like a very uh, quick way of making money. And you know what? I have. Oh, by the way, subscribe my uh, YouTube channel, please. I have a 5,000. I don't have 150,000. Okay. But I have 5,000. That I worked really hard. I applied for the Amazon thingy. I was not qualified. So hmm. tell me you why. You have the YouTube channel? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What you might have to do, um, uh, there is a way to contact Amazon. We had someone in our group who had 400,000 subscribers and couldn't get in. So we called Amazon to see why. And they were like, oh, it's just a glitch in our system. Here, let's click this button here mm. and do this and that. And he was able to get in. So, um, but... I've seen like I have, I have an old channel because I have a second account right now trying to get in. So I have two accounts. Um, that account is from an old YouTube channel I used to have that had over two thousand followers on it, uh, and I haven't posted on there in years. Yeah, and I applied with that one and I got in right away. So wow, wow, we'll, we'll figure it out. We're gonna get you in there, Ching. Yeah, and <laughs> and some people said I complained, you know, on Clubhouse that they said it's because not enough uh, interaction. So you guys go. When you finish this, write some things, um, you know, like say, oh, give a thumb, whatever this. And then, uh, yeah, write something. Yeah. Oh, Colin is great. You know, we learn so much, you know, and do some. I think it, it is. It makes sense. You need to have some kind of interaction with your audience. Right. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, you know, it's YouTube is community building. So, you know, I think even just doing lives like this, like it's a great way to interact with your audience um and, and it seems like you got regulars too so you, know, you build that community you, you connect yeah. with people so it's, it's really yeah. great yeah i have regular people support me thank you so much yeah oh okay so <laughs> we're gonna do rapid fire all right so rapid fire all right so it has to be very quick okay um when do you get up in the morning seven o'clock <laughs> when do you go to bed uh usually 11 well that's very normal uh <laughs> Are you a good dad? Yes. <laughs> Is your child a, a terrible too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a romantic husband? I wish I was, but I, I, my wife says I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor wife. Uh, uh, <laughs> what is your favorite drink? Uh, coffee. Um, what is your favorite foreign country uh, you have visited? Uh, Peru. Wow, that's exotic. <laughs> uh, what kind of a cuisine you like the best? 
uh, um, Mexican cuisine. Oh, very nice. Um, which book you read mostly uh, recently that you will recommend us to read? Uh, I have been reading or listening on Audible to let me just double check the I get the title right. Cash advertising. Um, it's all about persuasion and marketing, and it has been super interesting. So, if uh, you won a lottery for twenty million dollars, how are you going to spend it? Um, I would <laughs> give it to Ching. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give it to Ching. <laughs> She can make more films. Um, I would probably, uh, you know, if I'm being honest, I'd probably just retire um, and, you know, just pr pursue projects that I want to do that don't make monetary sense. So uh, in terms of uh, Amazon, do you feel that it's not um, artistically rewarding or you don't really care? It is not artistically rewarding. It is very dull. <laughs> But it is rewarding. It is rewarding. I know. Uh, I feel. I feel. I have a mixed feeling about that. Uh, yeah. So, if, if, if you retire, um, where would you like to go? And is a mountain or or with the water? Ooh. Um, I'm gonna choose water. I'm gonna choose water. I feel like I, I'd like to retire and be able to just like fish and live homesteady. So <laughs> I'm going with water. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite color? Uh, does black count? Yes, of course. Then black. Oh, okay. That's very classic. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't know wear black because I ask people to avoid two colors on television or screen: white and black. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you were a, a blue. <laughs> well, inside is off white, so it's not white white. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I, I just thought about a question, then I forgot. Um, uh, oh, what is your junk food? Favorite junk food? Favorite junk food? Cookie dough. <laughs> We have a local gas station here that's really big in Wisconsin called Quick Trip, uh -huh. um, and they sell cookie dough in like a uh -huh. container, like a little cookie uh -huh. dough balls you can eat. It's like the greatest thing in the world. If you ever go to Wisconsin. You got to get it from Quick wow. Trip. Wow. Wow. So um, do your family, you have nine siblings, right? Oh, including you. Do you guys mm -hmm. see each other? Yes. Uh, most of them live locally. One just moved away a few hours, uh, but almost everyone's in the area. Okay. Uh, last question. Um, what kind of advice you're giving to people who want to become rich instantly on YouTube, what would you say? If you want to get rich on YouTube, I believe um, I'll, I'll refer to a, a Thomas Edison quote because I love Thomas Edison, uh, which is genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. You can have the idea, that's the 1% of starting a YouTube channel, making money on it, but it's 99% perspiration of executing, putting in the work, you know, making mistakes so you can learn from those that's going to, you know, be able to grow your YouTube channel. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, calling Michael to, to, to be here with us and shed your uh, knowledge and wisdom and tips to us. And thank you so much. And I'm sure all these students here and later on when they watch replay, they are going to gain uh, a lot and you don't have to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Colin's channel, he has how many people follow you? I've got 157,000. Oh, right that's now. sickening. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah, subscribe to his uh, channel, learn from him, and also subscribe, subscribe to Ching <laughs> and give her some engagement so Amazon will take her in. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'll, I'll meet you tomorrow morning at 9.30. Yeah, virtually. Uh, vo voicely. <laughs> voicely. Voicely. And you will all, everyone in the chat is going to join us. We'll I'll see you over on Clubhouse. You're going to download it tonight. Uh, we can't wait to have you there. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, you guys, uh, I really appreciate you all here today, our audience, and see you very, very soon. And next, uh, oh, on Sunday, I will be interviewing uh, Doris. Doris is a filmmaker I also met on Clubhouse. Yeah. 
and uh, yeah, it should be very, very fun. And next Wednesday, I'm going to also very many filmmakers. Uh, what's her name? Uh, 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 oh gosh. Uh, uh, Oh, it escaped me. You'll see in the in the it's another filmmaker uh, friend, Tamika, Tamika, Tamika. Yeah. So thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna say goodbye. It's over time. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Thank see you, ya, everyone. Thanks. Click leave studio. <laughs> 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 bye. Have a good dinner. All right, great stream. Thank you so much, uh, Mark. And um, thank you, Lewis. And thank you, Nick. Thank you all for watching. And thank you, um, Yukiko. Thank you, Nell. And thank you, more people on this panel. And uh, thank you, Sean, for watching. Thank you, Lady Hust Hustler. And thank you, uh, Colette. Thank you. Colette is here. And also, who else? Um, we have L Lalo was here. Annette was here. Thank you. Mary, thank you so much. Uh, thank you all. I, thank you, Kat. Yeah, thanks so much. And uh, I do this um, talk every Wednesday afternoon, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So come back to see us. And yeah. And also sometimes Sunday afternoon, 5 p.m. Okay, bye now. Thank you, Michael. Let's see. Thank you, Sean. Okay, I'm gonna click on that um, end broadcast. Bye now. <laughs>